sexual minorities and sexual orientation are vague terms covering anything from homosexuality, bestiality, incest, pedophilia. Do all these minority sexual practices merit protection? Third, threesome and semine does not breach the Article 12 guarantee of equality. While all human persons are of equal worth, not all human behaviour is equally worthy. We separate the actor from the act. In criminalising acts, we consider their wrongfulness, harmfulness and consequences on society. Parliament has the power to classify. This involves a choice like distinguishing murder and manslaughter. Classifications which satisfy the constitutional test of validity are called differentiation. Only invalid classifications are called discrimination. Criminalising same-sex sodomy but not opposite-sex sodomy is valid differentiation. 377A does not target any specific actor. It would cover a heterosexual male experimenting with male sodomy. Valid classifications must have a clear basis and be rationally related to a legitimate purpose. In serving public health and public morality, 377A passes constitutional muster with flying colours. Sir, public health and safety is a legitimate purpose served by the 377A ban on homosexual anal and oral sex. Both these practices are efficient methods of transmitting sexual disease and AIDS HIV, which are public health problems. These are not victimless crimes, as the whole community has to foot the costs of these diseases. Anal penetrative sex is inherently damaging to the body and a misuse of organs, like shoving a straw up your nose to drink. The anus is designed to expel waste. When something is forcibly inserted into it, the muscles contract and cause tearing. Fecal waste, viruses caused by sperm and blood, thus congregate with adverse health implications like gay bowel syndrome, anal cancer. Acts of gross indecency under 377A also covers unhygienic practices like rimming, where the mouth comes into contact with the anus. Consent to harmful acts is no defence. Otherwise, our strong anti-drug laws must fall, as it cannot coexist with letting in recreational drugs as a matter of personal lifestyle choice. Opposite sex sodomy is harmful, but medical studies indicate that same-sex sodomy carries a higher price tag for society because of higher promiscuity and frequency levels. The New York Times reported that even informed homosexuals return to unsafe practices like barebacking and bug chasing after a health crisis wanes. A British study showed that the legalization of homosexual sodomy correlated with an upsurge of STDs among gays. Common sense tells us that with more acceptance, any form of consensual sexual behavior increases. Sodomy laws have some deterrent effect. It is rational for the state to target the most acute aspect of a problem. The legal issue is not whether the state should be concerned with heterosexual sodomy, but is it reasonable to believe same-sex sodomy poses a distinct problem? Medical literature indicates that gays have disproportionately higher STD rates, which puts them in a different category from the general public, warranting different treatment. The onus rests on opponents of 377A to negate every conceivable basis for treating homosexual and heterosexual sodomy differently. They cannot, because classifications do not need to be perfect and can be under-inclusive. Valid classifications only need to go some way to serve the legislative goal, which 377A clearly does. Sir, the power to legislate morality is not limited to preventing demonstrable harm. The Penal Code now criminalizes the wounding of both religious and racial feelings. 377A serves public morality. The argument from community reminds us we share a way of life which gives legal expression to the moral repugnancy of homosexuality. Heterosexual sodomy, unlike homosexual sodomy, does not undermine the understanding of heterosexuality as the preferred social norm. To those who say the 377A penalizes only gays, not lesbians, notes there have been calls to criminalize lesbianism too. Public sexual morality must buttress strong families based on faithful union between man and wife, the best model for raising children. The state should not promote promiscuity, not condone sexual exploitation. New Section 376D criminalizes the organization of child sex tours. Bravo!
The argument from consent says the state should keep out of the bedroom to safeguard sexual autonomy. While we cherish racial and religious diversity, sexual diversity is a different kettle of fish. Diversity is not license for perversity. This radical liberal argument from consent is pernicious, a leftist philosophy based on radical individualism and radical egalitarianism. It is unworkable because every viable moral theory has limits to consent. Radical individualism would demand decriminalizing consensual adult incest, but the penal code is not based on consent as Section 376F reflects. The state has always retained an interest in regulating conduct in the bedroom. The issue is which type. Radical egalitarianism applied to sexual morality says the state should not morally distinguish between types of consensual sex. It exudes a false neutrality, but actually sneaks in a substantive philosophy. Hedonism, which beats narcissism. This extols satisfying desire without restraint as a matter of autonomy. But some desires are undesirable, harming self and society. The argument from consent ultimately celebrates sexual libertine values, the fruit of which is sexual licentiousness, a culture of lust which takes, rather than love which gives. This social decline will provoke more headlines like a 2004 Herwell article called Gay Guy Confesses, I Slept With 100 Men. One of them could be your hubby. What about the broken-hearted involved? If you argue from consent, how can you condemn any form of sexual self-expression, no matter how selfish or hurtful? No man is an island. Ideas embodied in laws have consequences. Don't send the wrong message. Clearly, the issues raised in the petition fall apart on rigorous analysis. Sir, government policy is not to proactively enforce 377A. Some argue that just keeping this law on the books will erode the rule of law. I disagree. It is not turning a blind eye on the existence of homosexuals here. It is refusing to celebrate homosexuality while allowing gays to live private lives. This is prudent, as enforcing bedroom offences is difficult, and such powers must be used judiciously. We have other hard to police laws which embody communal standards of decency, such as laws against nudity visible to the public eye even if you're at home. Law is a moral teacher and makes a moral statement. Six years ago, Singapore symbolically blocked access to 100 internet porn sites as a statement of our values. We value our values while remaining realistic. A non-proactive policy does not mean 377A will never be enforced. Who knows what another season may require? Policies can change. Sir, citizens are not just concerned with the rule of law, but with the rule of good law. Laws which violate core moral values will alienate many and bring the system into disrepute. Indeed, many citizens see keeping 377A as evidence the government is defending the right moral values which lends legitimacy. Sir, it is true that not all moral wrongs, such as adultery, are criminalized, yet they retain the stigma. But adulterers know they've done wrong and do not lobby for toleration of adultery as a sexual orientation right. Conversely, homosexual activists lobby hard for a radical sexual revolution waging a liberal, fundamentalist crusade against traditional morality. They adopt a step-by-step -step approach to hide how radical the, the agenda is. Liberals never ask what happens next if you repeal 377A. Responsible legislators must see the big picture. Pro-gay academics identify five main steps in this agenda in foreign country studies. Step one, repeal laws criminalizing homosexual sex. They consider this pivotal to advancing the homosexual agenda. Why? Without this, they cannot advance in the public sphere or push for government funding and support for special programs, such as the New York Gay High School. Governments don't promote criminal activities. You need to change the criminal law before changing civil law. But decriminalizing sodomy is only ping shen yi jiao, the tip of the iceberg, 12% of an ice mass. We must see what lies beneath the water to avoid a titanic fate. Step two is to equalize the age of consent for heterosexual and homosexual sex. In some countries, this is as low as 13. Do we want to expose sec one boys to adult sexual predators to be sexually creative?